Okay, this is a very quick run through of the changes that are showing up in 7.5.73, I think. Um, so I've been working on um, a couple of specific things related to some feedback um, that I'm doing with uh, some folks who are helping with the evaluation of um, uh, some UX and accessibility work. So um, Mark at seven, so go ahead and open this up. Um, I know a lot of people pin the program to the taskbar. I know I do. Um, so going forward, um, the program will utilize in Windows 7 up to 10 and into 11 um, things that Windows calls are jump lists. So uh, from the pin, if you right click, um, you can see the tasks have been enabled. So right now, um, the icons aren't quite what I want, and that'll eventually get updated, but I wanted to go ahead and put this here. So there are uh, these four tasks that are set up. Um, I'll probably end up setting these up eventually to allow folks to select their own. These are uh, four common tasks. Uh, so from here, you can uh, jump directly uh, to the program without having to open the program. So one of the goals here is to try and find ways to reduce clicks. Um, so one of the other things that happens with that is that um, Windows will keep track when a jump list is created, Windows starts keeping track of um, most recently used files for that purpose. So as files get used, um, you'll see that they show up now um, in the list and you can pin those so that they don't go away if you want to keep them. So if you have a file that you're using on a regular basis, um, you can pin that uh, to the tool. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, if you don't want to use the task list, the, particularly the, the part that shows up here, um, now that Mark Edit's turned on the concept of a jump list, you'll start seeing the recent stuff. But if you don't want these tasks here, um, Mark Edit is placing that functionality uh, in the ease of use area. And you'll find it here where it says enable uh, taskbar shortcuts. Uh, so the other thing you probably notice when you are looking at the video, if you used marked it up before, um, you'll notice that this link is highlighted. Um, what I've done uh, based on feedback is that for folks who are primarily keyboard oriented, um, it wasn't really easy to tell um, what control was selected. So you couldn't really tell um, if you hit the enter key what was being selected. So now you'll see that the tool is tracking um what was been selected so you know at any given time when you click on the enter button uh, what would be turned on um, when you hover over these style of links where uh, traditionally um, the program would give very little feedback other than um, a hand you'll see that the link is highlighted in a box um, so that gives you an idea um, where the the click area is uh, you can see that this is um, turned on across to other places. Um, the other thing you might notice is that, again, for keyboard-oriented users, um, the things that happen here um, have never had keyboard shortcuts. There may be keyboard, there are alt keys you can use to get to those things. They require navigating the menus. Um, so what I've been doing is going through and anywhere where there is a button um, that lacks uh, a keyboard shortcut, I've been um, adding them. So here you can see when you hover over the control one, will automatically open that. So I can use keyboard shortcuts um, for all of these. I'm going to dump these keyboard shortcuts so that it's easy for you to so that folks, if they need a, a shortcut list, they can see them. Um, but these are being used. Um, they'll be propagated across the entire application. But for right now, um, I've handled the first two windows that are primarily button-based, and those are going to be our image button-based, and those are going to be the front page here um, and the toolbars here. Um, the other thing I've been doing um, based on feedback is that um, as folks have been going through and assessing um, the different windows, they've been noticing that the if you are a keyboard user and you tap between things, um, some windows like this one now have a order to them. So there it makes sense in terms of where 
the, the keyboard um, is moving to. Um, in other forms, that wasn't the case. So for example, um, in the uh, options window, you would tab down this in the previous versions of our edit that right there doesn't happen in order. Um, it would bounce all over. So it would be very difficult to see and have kind of a, um, a, a concept of like in what order things we're gonna show up in. So um, I'm going through all the windows and consolidating um, and uh, formalizing the tab orders. So that way in screens where say I've been doing work on the windows and I've been adding new inputs, when I, when I do that, um, I have to reset the tab order um, in order for the tool to um, remember uh, to keep doing things in order rather than adding the new controls to the end of the list. And I haven't always been um, really good about making sure that happens. So um, part of the process of going through this is to um, consolidate uh, those, those new forms into the tab order structure so that way they work correctly. Um, the other thing um, that you'll notice with the program is if you are a if you use the OCLC integration um, in previous versions of MarkEdit, uh, the OCLC operations um, had, uh, actually I need to grab, just put, uh, export my integrations into my shell here real quick. So in the previous version, um, the um, OCLC integrations were uh, multiple windows. So there are currently in the program, uh, I believe, um, four or five individual windows for OCLC content but they all tend to, um, they all tend to share a lot of code. And so that makes them somewhat difficult to manage. So here I'm going to import these. And now, um, I have to validate them real fast. All right, so keys it all and validated. So now um, what you're going to find in the OCLC integration is rather than individual forms, um, I've created an OCLC integration hub. And so this hub is what will get open to when um, you interact with the tool um, in the various places where um, the OCLC integration can be called. Uh, the hub will get called instead. Um, and what that does then is it allows me to uh, integrate a lot of code together. Um, so that way uh, the tool is hopefully making better use of um, uh, shared coding. Uh, you'll also notice there's some functions that have been added like collect debugging. So that now works across all of the windows, which it didn't before. Um, and so the profiles, which are shared across all of the windows now are in one spot, so they can be pulled together. So that works um, pretty well. If, for example, you were, I consider this kind of, because it's a pretty big change consolidating a lot of windows together. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, if you're a heavy user and you're using the new version and the hub misses something, um, you can uh, let me know. Uh, and then go back to the options and then other, um, I've added a new option here for preview options. So this is where I'm gonna put content as I'm trying, as I'm consolidating and making changes to the interfaces. And so you can uncheck the new OCLC hub, um, restart mark edit. And then when you go back 
uh, the tool will now go back and just use the old forms as is, no changes since the program should interact as it did before. Um, the hub's turned on by default because um, that is the, the direction that I'm going and that will uh, likely become the current um, method for interacting with OCLC's actions um, probably within a month or so, but this way as kind of shake the, the pieces out, um, be able to see how that works. So a couple of things still I'm sorting out. See, uh, if you've been watching the video, you may notice sometimes this box will get stuck. Um, so uh, that's all event-based. So I'm trying to make sure that the Windows occasionally swallows events. And so just making sure that those get cleaned up. Um, I'll probably set um, an option in ease of use that allows you to turn off uh, these kind of boxes as well as probably the highlighting um, in case you're not interested in it. Um, but that will be uh, there. Um, you also have the ability to change um, the highlighting. So again, in ease of use, um, in the themes, uh, there's a new option here for select uh, label highlighting color. And so that um, allows you to modify uh, the highlight color. Uh, so for example, if I select the, the dark theme, See the dark theme here, um, have the label highlight color, which I believe is set to, well, let's find out. Um, I believe is set to uh, uh, something that's easy to read inside the dark theme, but let's look. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a blue and all these things turn white, but if that's not a color that you're interested in, you actually can go into um, the themes here and adjust that color setting to something maybe that you want differently. So maybe you're more of a yellow or something. So you can change that color, um, apply that across your, your, um, your themes and then have that work. So that's kind of work that's been going in. And I'll continue to move um, these kind of changes uh, into this ease of use area. And I expect as I work here that this window here probably is going to get some work done on it because, um, again, it's very panel-y. Um, one of the things I'll probably be doing is making it a little less so. So that's going to probably change it, maybe look more like the way that Office interacts with the um, advanced settings because that tends to be, um, shows up in a lot of other applications. Um, but I'll be trying to continue to push more information into um, the ease of use area um, so that the content that gets consolidated in here can continue to be used. Um, this stuff is all being tested on Windows 10 because that's the operating system I use. Um, I really don't test backwards, but everything that works here should work backwards to any version of the operating system that's supported by .NET, which is, I believe, Windows 7. I'm also testing up through Windows 11 because um, I have um, a developer's build that I'm working on to make sure that everything works there. So uh, those are the changes that are out now. So um, if you um, have feedback, happy to hear it. Um, otherwise, uh, this is the, just so you're aware, this, these kind of changes will be being made over the next month or so.